such a pleasure to come together and worship the Lord. And uh, as for my, I'm very excited about next week. We are going to meet all our brethren and it's going to be a time of celebration and I do believe you are uh, equally excited about it. Um, <clears throat> so be prepared uh, and we, lo we are looking forward to have more fun times and uh, memor uh, we, we may create more memories together uh, even in Lonavla. Mm -hmm. We are so grateful to God for this opportunity as well as all the church leadership and everyone who is working towards it. Uh, having said that, I would like to uh, <coughs> uh, uh, request you to please pardon me. Uh, my throat is not in a good condition. I'm suffering with cough since a week. Uh, so uh, in between, if I cough, kindly please uh, be patient with me and forgive me for that. Uh, having said that, we would like to move into the sermon. The scripture read to us. Uh, was a common scripture to all of us, well known to all of us, and in fact, uh, the, since the last four weeks, we are uh, meditating on the same scripture. I've started the series of messages on uh, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, till now, we have uh, studied about our, and then our Father, and then our Father who art in heaven. The Lord's Prayer is such a rich prayer, and in fact, I, I do believe that we can spend years of time in meditating that. As I was studying it, uh, I myself was surprised to see the depths uh, of this prayer. Uh, <clears throat> that is the very reason. And, and it is no wonder that Jesus uh, taught his disciples to pray in this manner. So for this week, we will be looking at the next verse in the prayer, that is, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We'll be focusing on this phrase, hallowed be thy name. All of you might have noticed I sent a PDF file in the church group in this morning. Okay, What I'm sharing to you today, I'm going to bring a few quotations and all most of these quotations are taken from the PDF file I have sent to you. Uh, those are the writings of early church fathers and what they were believing about Christ, what they were, be I mean, uh, what they were believing about uh, uh, God the Father. And then they have few comments about Lord's Prayer and they have uh, their own thoughts about the identity of Jesus Christ and God. And so very rich theology has been uh, explained in that, in that particular uh, book, which is a collection of uh, uh, great theological uh, fathers, with great church fathers of uh, all time, uh, like Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, and, uh, <coughs> and a few others. So um, I'm going to bring few quotations which are uh, taken from that book. The reason I shared it with you so that uh, you may be able to uh, look what I'm uh, look or understand what am I what am I speaking in the context. Uh, so, I mean, in order to provide the context for what I am saying, uh, I just wanted, I just shared that file with you. Having said that, we'll move into the message today. Hallowed be thy name. What are we going to discuss, what are we going to meditate in this morning is about this word and, the, uh, <clears throat> and we will be asking few questions and we'll try to uh, understand and try to get some kind of uh, responses or answers towards this question, uh, sorry, this particular, uh, it, for these questions which would give understanding about the statement, hallowed be thy name. The first question would be, we'll be discussing about what is the name of the Father? To be hallowed, we said hallowed be thy name. What is this name that we need to understand? And then what does it mean to say that your name should be hallowed? And number three, how how is father's name be hallowed what does it mean to be hallowed and how god's name can be hallowed that's these three questions we will be discussing this <coughs> morning and for many people the name of the father is so very important you know there are groups that they have separated from the church and they started their own cults and groups just because people are pronouncing the name of God differently. Okay, and uh, uh, some religious circles, God's name is uh, God name has to be correct. Uh, sorry, spelled correctly. 
and if you spell wrong you are uh, diluting the power of God because they, they said there is power in the name of God and if you are not able to spell the name of God correctly and you will be missing out that power and what does the Bible say about the name of God I would like to since it's a huge subject I'm taking only few verses and few perspective few thoughts only so one of the things the Bible says about the name of God is this we can find in Psalm chapter 9 verse 10 uh, and those who know your name will put their trust in you for you Lord have not forsaken those who seek you this tells us that knowing the name of God help us to grow in faith those who know the name of the Lord will put their trust in him that's what Sami says okay so that may be because of that very reason lots of people are very much concerned about the name of God and they're fighting about the name of God which is not at all necessary and they are separating and they're bringing divisions in the church uh, <clears throat> however I would like to know what do you think is the name of God what is the name of God for you what I'm going to do is I'm going to really put say share a Mentimeter link in the church group kindly open the church group of course people say it is uh, using phones is not allowed in the church but perhaps for response we can use it and as we are as GSA is going growing technologically and advancing in it open your church whatsapp group and I have shared a link to you please open the link and uh, uh, answer there are you you have option uh, sorry you have three options you can uh, you can give three answers for this question which will be displayed on the screen what is the name of God okay I request all of you to answer it's not necessary you have to fill all three at least one you, you can think okay some said uh, G, uh, God's name is Jesus or Jesus Christ in full form and some said God the Father Holy Spirit or oh, God is love oh, okay God's name is love and his name is friend and so some said his name is Yeshua my Savior very good keep your answers coming keep your answers coming oh God's name is I am okay the sovereign being eternal love creator all powerful very good keep your answers coming I know you have so many thoughts and in fact you're bringing wonderful uh, uh, theology in fact you're saving my time I don't need to speak about lot steps of faith okay <coughs> Holy Spirit, wonderful. Very good. All of you have uh, given wonderful answers for this question. What is the name of God? Um, and uh, please keep your answers coming. Uh, people in the online or someone can uh, uh, see those answers. Uh, having said that, I would like to uh, move forward with my message. All the answers you have given and which are on the screen, uh, they are good descriptions about God for sure. All these things are, all these answers are biblical and they are right about God and they are true about God. Okay? But let us see what these early church fathers or early believers were thinking about in the name of the Father. Okay? Uh, Roshan, if you could uh, put my slide back. <clears throat> yeah what is the name of the father what is the name of the father what early church fathers or early Christians were thinking about the name of the father uh, there is a person his a very famous theologian and a speaker and orator his name is Justin Martyr who lived in the second century uh, he his uh, this quotation is taken from the same book I have shared with you in the morning we have been taught and are convinced 
and do believe that he accept those only who uh, imitate his excellencies which reside in him temp uh, which reside in him temperance and justice and philanthropy and uh, <coughs> as many virtues as peculiar to a god who is called by no proper name early church fathers and uh, believers christians they were thinking that god does not have a proper name we have so many names right okay let's see what uh, some others let's see few few other quotations also from another quotation from justin martyr again no one can utter the name of the in inevitable god if anyone dare to say that there is a name he raves with a hopeless madness if anyone think and if anyone say that there is a name of god there is a name for god the father and he is in hopeless madness it is quite shocking and disturbing to many of us am i right because we are used to believing in many names about god but these early church fathers they were saying that god does not have a proper name and if we think he has a proper name that is utter madness let's see a few more thing why a uh, few more things and let us explore why god doesn't have a name why these authors are saying god does not have a name we can see uh, early church father his his name is artis d uh, aristides okay ad 125 this is also quotation from the same book god is not born not made an everlasting abiding nature without beginning and without end immortal perfect and incomprehensible he is no he sorry he has no name for everything which has a name is kinder to things created some of the words you might have seen they have they were in the answers we received all those descriptions are true and <clears throat> this church father says god does not have a name because if you say there is a name for god there should be somebody along with him or in other words the names are there only for the things that are created we can give name to something that is created that is made can we give a name to something or someone who is not created and who is from eternity past to eternity present uh, sorry future can we give a name to him can he has a name no because he is there is uh, because uh, there is nothing that can give a name if you say that we give a name it is it is becoming a created thing because only for created things we can give name and another uh, quotation we'll see which will be a, which will clarify a little more this is by justin martyr again <clears throat> to the father of all who is unbegotten there is no name given for by whenever name he be called he has as his elder the person who gives him the name but these words father and god and creator and the lord and master are not names but appellations derived from his good deeds and functions also the appellations god is not a name but an opinion implanted in the nature of men of a thing that can hardly be explained if we say that somebody has a name that means he that he has predecessors there are somebody who is before him to give him a give him a name but for god there is no beginning there is no end there is no one before him there is no one after him there are no one who is with him <laughs> to give him a name he is the only uncreated eternally existing person and he is incomprehensible person he it is very difficult to explain we cannot explain god also and there is no one before him that is the reason god there can be no one who can give name to god and god does not have a name because there is no one preceding him and there is there was no one who was with him from eternity past 
to give him name. That is the reason God does not have any name. And this is from, uh, this is taken from Isaiah chapter 44. Uh, this is a very familiar words to all of us where God says, this is what the Lord says, uh, Israel's king and redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. If he is the first and he is the last, there is no one with him. Then who can give him name? That's why God cannot have name. Let us look at for another reason, which is from uh, uh, Lact Lactantius. He is also early church father from three, uh, fourth century. He said, God has no name because he is alone. Nor is there any need of proper name except in cases where a multitude of persons require a distinguishing mark so that you may designate each person by his own mark in appellation. But God, because he is always one, has no peculiar name. For God, as I have shown in the beginning, does not need a name. God doesn't have a name because he doesn't need a name. We have few men here. That is why we have people similar to each other. That is the reason we need names to distinguish each other, distinguish one person with the other person. But for God, there is no one like him. He is alone. He alone, there can be no one who can be compared with him. That is the reason we, cannot, we don't need to distinguish him because there is no one like him. For us, for men we have similarities. For women we have similarities. That is the reason we need names to distinguish from person to person for God. He is alone. That's why he doesn't require a name even to distinguish because he is alone. So what is the name of the father then? Okay. And here uh, <coughs> again the early church father named Cyprian, he says, Neither must you ask the, the name of God. God is his name. There is need of names when a multitude is to be distinguished, but by the appropriate characteristics of appellations. To God, who alone is, belongs the whole name of God. God doesn't require a name, primary thing, because there is no one like him. That is one thing he said. And the next thing he is saying is, but we need to address somebody. We need to address God. That's why we got this word God. And there is no one who can take this word God except God. That's why he's saying he alone owns the, the word God. Appellation. These are titles. Okay. This is not a name again. Okay. These are titles. <clears throat> so God alone can take the title God. That's what the author is saying. So God, does God have a name? According to early church fathers, there is no name for God. Now you imagine we are worshipping the God who doesn't have a name. For so many people, it was so very difficult. And the entire Old Testament witnesses how difficult it is for humans to worship a God for whom the, for whose image is not available, who, who, who does not know, I mean, uh, whose appearance is not known to people. And now... Let us imagine and think we are worshipping a God who does not even have a name. But God has many titles and some of those titles are Lord, Father. You must be wondering, somebody answered God's name is God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. In GCA also we are talking so much about God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, the triune God. Okay, But the Father is also not a name. It is just a title. Okay, My daughter calls me Father. But I am not completely, my name is not Father. My name is Praveen. That is my title to my, father, my daughter. Okay, Similarly, Father or the Son and the Holy Spirit, uh, these Holy Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, these are not the names, they are just titles. And the last surprising thing is even the word I am, which we are calling Yehovah, 
Yahweh. <coughs> this is also not a name. This is a title again, which we will be exploring further. Okay. We call God Father, which is masculine in gender, but God is neither male nor female. Similarly, whatever the name we use for God, He does not have a proper name. This is an example He is giving. We say God the Father. The moment we hear the word Father, masculine gender comes into mind. The moment we hear the word Son, masculine gender comes into the mind. But God does not have any gender. Similarly, there are a lot of words titles we use and names we use <coughs> those are not the names of God those are the only appellations or um, titles and uh, again Clement said not Clement Sandry but Clement of Alexandria he said uh, any names or titles that we give the father or to aid us in understanding the mystery of God but even these are not the proper names of the Father. Lot of the titles we are reading. Yahweh you say, the Lord you say, God you say, a Master you say, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit you say. All these are the words that are given to us so that we may, they may help us understand the characteristics of God. But they are not the names of God. Those are given so that they may help us, so that we may understand God better. He doesn't have a name because of few reasons that we can, we'll uh, just summarize from what we have seen till now. <coughs> he doesn't have a name because names are given by parents or someone who is elderly. There is no one before God or with him. That's the reason he cannot have a name. And the purpose of name is to distinguish between the beings, there is no one like him. He alone exists. That's why he cannot have a name. God's many titles describe who God is and what God is, but they are, they are the descriptions of God's characteristics, but they are not the name. Titles are the descriptions of who God is and what he does, but they are not names. So this is what early church uh, was believing. And as we are discussing this, you may think, what about the uh, uh, biblical example or uh, you know incident where God, uh, Moses had an encounter with God. God spoke to Moses and Moses asked him, tell me what is your name? And then God revealed his name there. Okay, what is that name? I am? Who I am. Okay, let us see. Moses asked for the name of God. And God said, I am who I am. And Yahweh. For, uh, is it the name of God? That's what we'll see now. What about Yahweh? Y-H-W-H, uh, uh, sorry, Y-H-W-H, which is also called Tetragrammaton. Technically, this particular thing is called Tetragrammaton. Many think Yahweh or why this Tetragrammaton is the proper name of God because when Moses asked for the name of God, God gave this. We can see that in Exodus chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Then Moses said to God, Indeed when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am, which is in Hebrew or Aramaic, WHVH Yahweh or Yehovah which we are talking about and he said thus you shall say to the children of Israel I am has sent me to you somebody uh, sent an answer saying I God's name is I am okay so God Moses asked what is your name God said I am who I am if you go and tell people tell them that I am has sent you <coughs> thinking because of that we think this tetragrammaton uh, is the name of God. And actually even we are saying with the YHWH we call it like how? Yehovah. Some call it Jehovah. And in fact do you know there are lots of Christian cults or groups they have separated uh, just because they reject the word Jehovah. There is no J in Greek. There is no J in Hebrew. Then how come this name of God Jehovah came? 
because this is a pagan god this sound itself is not there in those aramaic hebrew and greek languages how could you say the god's name is jehovah okay the reality is the aramaic language or the hebrew language they don't have vowels we have a e i o u right without them we cannot write and in telugu we have a to amaha okay without them we may not be able to speak but many of these uh, in the text and all uh, hebrew and aramaic languages they don't have vowels then this is one of the place god gave a name which does not have a vowel that means which no one can no man can pronounce <laughs> we cannot say that y h w h okay and these <coughs> hebrew old <coughs> this hebrew old testament was translated into greek that is called septuagint and from septuagint latin translations have come okay and from latin again english and now we are getting we are having english translations directly from hebrew and greek <coughs> but basically when we talk about name of god and primarily the scripture hebrew aramaic words are there that are translated to greek from greek to latin came and the same words are taken in english also and this whyh this is also the name jehovah we are talking and lots of people are judging us because there is no word je, there is no sound j came like that only this tetragrammaton was whyh and <coughs> jewish people they had a equivalent for tetragrammaton if you read in the old testament you will find this word as capital l o r d which means the tetragrammaton was used there hebrew people they they call it they have another name for that the, the word is adonai which means lord again okay so tetragrammaton is there and equivalent for tetragrammaton from hebrew is adonai when these la these translators came they brought because the, yeah, the tetragrammaton is not able to pronounce we are not able to say the word it doesn't have vowels what they did is they brought <coughs> tetragrammaton and adonai they brought both together and they created the name we call yehova or jehova and the same thing is taken into latin and english when latin translators came they brought these two words together so that people may be able to utter it otherwise tetragrammaton is not in a condition we are not in a condition to utter, utter the tetragrammaton that's how this jehova name has come into existing even then the mystic name which is called uh, and <coughs> you know how do we know that this word is called uh, tetragrammaton is called Jeho Je jehova is because um again clement helped us clement from alexandria he helped us uh, how to pronounce this name and he say he wrote the mystic name which is called the tetragrammaton by which alone who had access to the holy of holies were protected he is pronounced jehova until they write none of us know about it from their references only we are using the word jehova this is a mixture of hebrew greek and latin translations so from there this word came however this is again a mystic mystic name but it is not a proper name to god the and why am i saying it is not a proper name to god because again the same scripture isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 it is written this is what the lord says israel's king and redeemer the lord almighty i am the first and i am the last apart from me there is no one god take this word i am the first and i am the last trick i am who i am both are similar names and early church church fathers they have studied and they said this on this account as i said before when he sent moses to hebrews god did not mention any name but by a participle he mystically teaches them that he is the one and the only god when god said i am who i am this is not the name of god that god had given to moses and he was teaching moses 
that I am the one who is existing. And before me and after me, there is no one exists. That is the mystery God wanted to teach. And he revealed it through Moses. Many a times we think, I am who I am is the God's name. And either, either just think about this. Where somebody came, came to you and uh, you asked him, what is your name? He said, I am who I am. What do you understand? Two ways, I am who I am means, ne, ne, ne. I am who I am. You cannot give me name. And the next, next thing is, you understand, you have nothing to do with my name. You have nothing to do with my name. The word I am who I am is very offensive, in fact, <laughs> for, us in a, for us in a conversation. When Moses asked, what is your name? Moses asked this question to God. God said, I am who I am. Just imagine that. I, I, I imagine it in Telugu. Okay, because that's where I can relate to it better. Moses came to God and said, what is your name? Ne, 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 vai. In other words, you don't have anything to do with my name. That itself tells. This is not a name basically, but God is revealing a great quality about himself that is his existence. And there is no one before him and after him. That's why when we talk about Ten Commandments also, see, I am the God who, I am the Lord who created heavens and earth and there is no one beside me. This is the most repeated word we find when God comes and speaks to Israel. So this one and second one is, I am the God, Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In that light, he is revealing all this. Okay? So, this I am who I am, Yahweh, is not even the name of God. It is revealing the characteristics of God that is ever existing. I am means ever existing. That's what he was revealing him. That's what early church fathers, they noticed it and they kept it. So now you imagine what I, will, I would like to ask you to think about it. You are worshipping God. God, we worship your name. We lift your name up. And we sing, right? We lift up the name of God. We come in the name of God, as David says. Just now, you th we let us think. God doesn't have a name. How is our worship? And how are we going to hallow his name? God doesn't have a name. Can we imagine God now without any name? Such a mystic God, such a uh, what we call transcendent God. That would be the better word I can say. So transcendent we cannot comprehend. He is so transcendent that's why we could not give him a name. <coughs> when we give somebody a name, we limit it. If I give a name to this presenter, I'm limiting it. It is not, they're saying it is not camera. Presenter means it's not camera. It's not AC. We are limiting the moment we give a name. We cannot give a name to God. And we are worshipping a God who is beyond all comprehension. He is so transcendent, beyond all understanding. And no human in the world can ever completely understand God. And we are worshipping such a transcendent God. Okay, having said that, let us move to the next phase of it. Which is, Jesus said that I revealed your name to my disciples. You know the words, right, from John. Jesus was praying in John 17. I revealed your name to the, my disciples. What name did Jesus reveal to the disciples? Anywhere in the New Testament you found? If you say father, again I'm telling you, father is not a name. Father is just a title. Okay. And Jesus said in a particular place, that is in John 17, verse 11 and 12. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Holy Father keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them the wo in the world, I kept them in your name. What is this again? I have protected them in your name. Uh, I have kept them in your name. What does it mean? And I have revealed your name. This is the word, these are the words Jesus is talking about. <clears throat> in the entire New Testament, we see that no way Jesus ever uttered any name of God. Not even one place. 
So what is this name that Jesus kept the disciples? Oh, using this name, Jesus kept the disciples. Actually, the reality is it is not about any name like Jehovah, Adonai, Elohim, or any of this. You don't find Jesus using any of these names. When he said, I have kept them in your name, what he mentioned is about unity. In 17 it is written, Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, that I may come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The disciples may be one as we are one. What comes to our mind the moment we think about God is unity in diversity. Three in one. One God in three persons or three persons in one God. In complete union, harmony, love and affection, which we are calling perichorosis. They are complete union. They are one. They cannot be separated. Okay, And Jesus is saying, I have kept them together. They may be one. You keep them in your name by your unity in diversity. By your very great quality of unity and diversity. That is the very, um, what we will call, mechanism of our God. There are no words which can be used to explain that. Okay? <clears throat> so that's how God is. And in that, you keep them together. That's what Jesus was saying. So when Jesus said, in your name I kept them, he is mentioning like, you and I are one, they may be one. He is talking about the unity in Jesus' name, uh, in God's name. And that's uh, just like in Exodus chapter 6, verse 4. The moment we talk about God, the first thing Israelites have to know and learn about God is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord is one. It is about unity of God. That's what Israelites should, have, should know. And when Jesus said, Mystically, he was talking about the union. It is not about some kind of name Jesus used to protect or to keep the disciples together. Having said that, let us move. What is the name of God now again? What is the name of God we should know, right? We understood the name of God is so mystical we will not be able to comprehend it. We are not able to comprehend it. That is 100% sure. He is so transcendent we are not able to understand it. Unless he reveals it. We can, he is unsearchable God. We cannot search him and find him completely. But he is 100% available God. He reveals himself to us. So can we know the name of God? <laughs> yes, we do can know the name of God. Sorry, uh, can we know the name of God? The answer is no, we cannot know the name of God. Can he teach us the name of God? Yes, he can teach us the name of God. I hope you understand the difference. We cannot know the name of God, but he can teach us the name of God. Okay, having said that, oh, excuse me. Having said that, let us look at the scripture. Same thing, Exodus chapter 3, verse 15, where it is written, moreover, God said, <clears throat> Moses asked, what is your name? He said, I am who I am. Go and tell Israelites, I am has sent you. Then he did he leave there? No. He said, moreover, it is like, uh, as an author, imagine writing, God said, I am, my, I, am, I am who I am. Then moreover, he said this. So with an excitement, Moses was writing this. Okay. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, he sent me to you. This is my name forever and this is my memorial to all generations. Here God would like to reveal his name and he says, this is my name. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Jacob. I am the, God, sorry, I am the God of Isaac and I am the God of Jacob. This is my name. Not only in the Old Testament, not only in the New Testament, not only in the Middle Ages, not only in the postmodern period, forever. For all generations, 
by this I will be remembered. Remember, he said that, what he said? My memorial to all generations. All people should know me this way. I am the God of Abraham, Jacob, Isaac and Jacob. In other words, I am the God of Manova, Linda and Sanjay Rao. That's what he is saying. I am the God of you. I am the God of you. I am the God of you. I want to be known like this for all generations. I am the God of people. What is his name? The God of people. The God of Nelson, God of Praveen, and God of you and I. That is the name of God he wants to reveal. So his name is so mystical and mysterious which we are not able to comprehend. And he made it so simple and revealed it to us, I am the God of you and me. That is the name of God he is telling. The name of God is the God, <coughs> God of people. And he approved it and accomplished it and established how Jesus, he did not remain transcendent in heaven. He came as a human, became a human. And what is his name? He shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. With whom? With you and me. What is Jesus? He shall save his people from their sins, so he shall be called Jesus. What is this? Savior of the people. He wants to reveal his name as the God of the people and not just revealing 2004, sorry, 3,400 years ago that way, but he established it 2,000 years ago in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. After the resurrection, Jesus did not leave his humanity and he's going to remain as a human forever in which he is taking the humanity, he tagged humanity to him forever, in which again he is telling through the action, I am the God who tagged to humanity. In other words, I am the God of people. That is the name of God he is revealing. So, the name of God is unknowable, but he wants all generation to know him as God of people. And the, uh, the name of God is unsearchable mystery in general, but it's an intimate reality in relationship with, his, with him forever. You might have felt why I took some names as I'm saying about God's name. Two times I did. I know it, one time we use it's good, next time we use it's boring. But the reason I'm telling you is I want you, you to understand. He is so transcendent because he's unsearchable, but he is God of you and me. So that we may relate how intimately he tagged us with him. He remained as a human. He tagged humanity with him forever. He is a God of Jessica and Elizabeth forever. Third time I used. <laughs> this is the name of God. Having said that, let's move to the next part of it. Hallowed be thy name. Okay? We talk about uh, God's name should be hallowed. How the name of God can be hallowed? Okay? I'm going to put another link in the group. Please do answer. Yes, I shared the link. Getting answers, wonderful. <coughs> Keep sending. By rejoicing, we can worship the name of God. Yes, God, uh, Paul, Paul uh, sorry, not Paul, Paul. Uh, Paul commands us, rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. And again, I said rejoice. Okay, praising, wonderful. We praise God by worshiping. We glorify the name of God. And by doing His will, uh, knowing His will is a difficult thing, however. Uh, doing his will, we, we, we worship the name of God and we glorify his name by faith, um, by mirroring his image, wonderful, by songs, praises, faith, submitting, obedience in other words, wonderful action through our works, 
okay through our deeds wonderful keep keep your answers coming keep your answers coming how can we glorify the name of god oh, very good loving and sharing by our actions very good transformation wonderful obedience keep your answers coming showing his love to others <coughs> I appreciate all your response responses they are wonderful and uh, let's keep doing it thank you so much for your responses so that I don't need to talk about them okay so uh, I I will focus on something else okay uh, I appreciate all your responses okay hallowed be the name when we say okay, roshan can you please uh, switch hallowed be thy name how can we glorify the name of god how can we hallow the name of god number one answer is we cannot god alone can glorify his name we cannot <laughs> glorify his name he has his glory which is unsearchable again and which will not reduce any time and uh, he alone can glorify himself no one else can glorify him if we say we have to glorify him what glory he has before our creation he has all his glory before the creation and in fact he created us for his glory he wanted to share his glory with us if you read john chapter 17 where jesus says they may share in our glory he is praying for us we may share in our his glory it is not like uh we may add to add something to his glory neither by our singing not by our worship not even by our deeds which are filthy rags um, as i says okay uh, not me uh, so by our actions or charity whatever we call so much love whatever you say we cannot add anything to his glory god only can glorify himself that's why jesus also prays glorify your name father glorify me uh, okay it's for a long time um, if i don't know if i shared this incident thing with you or not uh, i used to think god is so selfish yaar for his glory he put me into all this mess because scripture says you are created for the glory of god i'm going through all this mess for his glory i so selfish i used to think then later i understood when i came across the, under, the knowledge of trinity and the trinitarian theology i realized the glory of god is not like god is seeking glory from us in fact the glory of god is like a hot potato game in god father the like the moment he has his glory he gives it to the son son gives to the holy spirit holy gives it to the holy, holy spirit gives to son son gives to the father it is not like give me glory give me glory give me glory it is not like, take glory take glory take glory father gives to the, they are not selfish they are other centered and at the end what we say he wanted to give the same glory to us and he brought us inside that hot potato grain and he is give he is throwing the hot potato of glory to us he is not selfish he we don't add anything to god's glory and he is giving his glory to us and god doesn't need us to glorify him because no one can add anything any glory to him and god doesn't require our worship also okay and uh, I, i know some people must be very difficult look uh, finding it difficult to take it but truly i'm telling god doesn't require our worship and in fact we don't worship god for god's sake okay and we worship because we require worshiping god we god doesn't require our worship but when we re- worship him we recognize him he is in our lives when we come and bow down before him we recognize there is someone stronger than me who is for me again god you are strong we sing the next thing we say you are for me 
right so when we whenever we come to worship the lord we worship him and recognize his strength when we recognize his strength it gives us strength we do, god doesn't require our worship we require worshiping god when we worship him we will be strengthened but no glory added to god but we will be sharing in his glory you remember moses he went to god's presence on the sinai mountain he saw god did he add any glory to god no on the way back he brought the glory on his face which people could not see he had to cover uh, like you know he had to wear burqa because he is getting the glory back when we go to the presence of god and worship him we don't add worship him to to worship to him but he will add his glory to us so we god doesn't require our worship we require to worship him that we need to realize and that is the very reason in this prayer hallowed be thy name is a petition it is not a wish hallowed be thy name in this prayer is a petition because we cannot work glorify god hallow his name he only can do it that's why it is part of a prayer and the name of the lord will be hallowed in relationship with him and in him through him by him only you know like god's name will be hallowed when we are in relationship with him and he alone can do that it's not you and me we can do we cannot worship the lord so our god whose name is so mysterious which we, which, which is incomprehensible and he revealed it to us in a most profound intimate level and we we, we uh, his name will be glorified not by our our efforts but his name will be glorified and his glory will be shared with us and what we desire is we pray along with him for his his name to be hallowed and we share his glory we worship him not because he require our worship we worship him because we require to worship god okay so having said that let me go what tells uh, and uh, let let me leave you with uh, uh, some uh, mem- some uh, some hope that we have when we uh, pray to god to his name should be hallowed one day. that is the blessed hope we have is in revelation chapter 3 verse 12 where it is written he who overcomes i will make him pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go out no more sorry he shall go out no more i will write on him the name of god and the name of the city of my god the new jerusalem which comes down from out of heaven from god and i will write on him my new name who abides in him they may receive this privilege where god is going to write his name on our ch- in, uh, chest or to hand whatever it is he is going to tattoo his name on us you know i and my wife had a desire we need to put some tattoo but it didn't happen however uh, now we recognize the god is going to put a tattoo of his name on us <laughs> okay and that's going to be a great glory okay he is sharing his glory with us another thing we find in revelation chapter 2 verse 17 he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches to him who overcomes i give some of the hidden manna to eat i will give him a white stone okay maybe pearl and uh, and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except him who reveals it imagine this there is a name of god which no one knows and personally he is writing to you on a pearl and give you on a stone see how a majestic or mysterious his name is and how personally he is bringing it to you imagine you have the stone having his name that's how he wants to bless us with sharing his name the glory of his name and my prayer is may the god the lord uh, grant his grace in our lives yeah sorry this grace in our lives where we hold where we have the name of god tattooed forever in the kingdom of god may god bless you